that huge bomb bay that we see with the bomb doors open there can carry a normal bomb load of 14,000 pounds. But at one stage they upped that to a maximum of 22,000 pounds, more than 10 tons, for the single huge Grand Slam bomb. It's the only aircraft ever to carry such a big bomb. And incidentally, the American equivalent of this, the B-17, their maximum was under 13 pounds. So this had a significantly bigger bomb load capability than the B-17. I think we'll see the bomb doors closing. Sony Taylor brings the Lancaster back in front of us. said of the aircraft, Sir George Edwards, grand old man of British aviation, who died in 2003. This was an aircraft designed by engineers and built by craftsmen and women for heroes to fly. 7,377 of these aircraft were built, and of that, 3,349 were lost on operation. That's 45 percent. So, Night after night, those crews would go out, knowing that their chances of survival were tiny. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that later this month, we're finally going to open a proper Bomber Command Memorial in London, in St. James's Park, just off Piccadilly. Not for full time. In Bomber Command as a whole, 126,000 aircrew flew into battle and 58,000 of them died. That's about 46% too. Bomber Command fatalities were one in seven of the total service casualties of the whole war. the Spitfire to rejoin the mothership. And Duncan Mason flying the Spitfire there is a pretty happy guy because having held on the BBNF for a while, he now finds that he is going to be the officer commanding the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight from the end of this season, which is one of the uh, only two full-time aircrew jobs on the squadron. So he's going to take over from squadron leader Ian Smith. As Her Majesty the Queen said on the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, she said, there are few sights or sounds able to evoke more powerful thoughts and emotions than the BBMF flying overhead. To some it commemorates loved ones and relatives who fought and died in the air during the Second World War. To others it's an example of this nation's resilience and its indomitable spirit in the face of adversity. But yet others, it represents a tangible link between the modern Royal Air Force and its illustrious forefathers. I would commend you all, so that's an order from the Queen, that when you next hear or see these aircraft, remember not only those who died serving the country in the air, but their applause for those who continue to serve wherever they are required around the world. 